My name is Pat. I'm founder of Whale Intentions. And my speech today will be about picking up with language barriers. Seems like a very specific topic, which is actually not a specific because um, you may have been confronted in the past about uh, like when you approached a girl and it turned out she speaks not your language or also not English. Or maybe you wasn't confronted before because you chose the path of, the stomped out path of least resistance. That means like when you approach a girl and she said, oh, sorry, I don't speak English. You was like, okay, go better for the HP3. She speaks English, she's more into me, let's go for this because this would be like too much effort. And uh, so I wanted to make this speech. I have really crazy stories about this. So let's uh, check it out. Now, what I, um, what I did is uh, I tried to break this down into two different types, uh, three different types of girls. Like we have uh, the girl type one, she's not interested, and, uh, but she may or may not speak English. These are the girls you, for example, approach and she says like no English and she passed by, she moves on. Now, from first hand experience, what I witnessed, uh, for example, seeing guys approaching those girls and she, she says like, sorry, not interested. They try to place themselves like uh, next to their friend when they talk or like when another guy approaches her and try to listen to the conversation. And when she like, for example, speaks English, they go there and confront her like, hey, you speak English. What, 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 what did you lie to me and stuff like really crazy, crazy fucked up thing. But you have no time for this girl. So really like, uh, that's why I have this in brackets, type one. It doesn't exist. When she shows no interest, I'm not go for it. I don't uh, try to rationalize. Does she speak German or English or what else she speaks? I don't care about. What I care about is type two. Type two, she's interested, but she speaks little or broken English. That means uh, when you learn like a uh, foreign language, it's often that you understand people better than you speaking the language. You understand the, the language better than you speaking on your own. And that's what also girls are like shy and shameful. Maybe they have fear of um, not the right pronunciations or making grammar mistakes or finding the right words. But actually sometimes this turned out to be like they speak the language better than maybe they think of themselves. And the hard case is girl like type three, she's interested, but she speaks no English at all, which means like zero English. Now, who here had like a type three girl ever? No English at all, okay. Well, where, where, where she was from? Like, I guess it was Latin America, yeah, Latin America mostly or Asian, like when people who are traveling, you will be confronted often with this, but also here in an international city like Vienna, sometimes it's the case. So the next will be like what to do in these scenarios with the invitive title, what to do first. Uh, before, we, before we start, like many guys will think, and I, before I prepared this speech, I read through forums, and uh, many guys were asking there, for international girls, what is a pickup line? What I can use for Latin America and Asia, wherever I'm traveling, is there a pickup line? And many guys get this wrong because they think that there have to be this ultimate pickup line I can use for every girl. Doesn't matter if she speaks the language or not, they have to, there have to be something. But actually, recent researches found out that words itself, they only matter 10% or less than 10% of the whole interaction. What matters is like nearly 60% body language and 30% tonality. And the rest is only the actual words spoken. So what to do in those scenarios is of course body language, which means what falls in like gestures, postures, facial expressions, when you're speaking with somebody, for example, I can say, hey, sorry, man, or I can say, hey, sorry, man. You know, there's like two different outcomes, two different meanings, just by the body language I'm presenting. The next one is eye contact. Of course, uh, there's a famous quote from the movie Scarface from Al Pacino, the eyes chico, they never lie. And uh, of course, like deep eye contact is really necessary, not only with girls who don't speak the language, but also the game in general, life in general. For example, when you don't look into their eyes, you can, they have the feeling that you're hiding something. And when you stare into their eyes, it comes along as awkward and you come along as creepy. So there's also a middle to everything. The next one is tonality. 
I talked about like try to like when you say things, play with your voice, a high pitch or a low pitch, not try to be like a robotic. The next one is smile more. Of course, when you can say like something, um, I don't know, when I speak uh, with a girl like fuck you, I can say it like with a smile. And it come, not, not, doesn't come along as like really insulting. Not like, for example, when I say like without a smile, like fuck you. You know, there's like two different outcomes again. The next one is mimics, a really, really important one. Mimics are actually coming naturally. When you know a person for longer, you are um, mimicking him automatically without even knowing. And this is a pretty, pretty good hack when you get to know a girl and you want to have this, you know, when the girl gets home and talks to her girlfriend, she says, "Ah, oh, this guy, I feel like I would have known, I would know this guy for like ages. There is something special. And you know what it is? It's actually mimics. Mimics is, for example, when I meet a girl, I approach her. I try to, when she takes longer break between the sentences, I'm doing the same. When she's doing certain facial expressions, I'm doing the same. I'm trying to copy her. The facial expressions, like special words she's using, I'm using the same. And that's why I'm generating this kind of bubble between us. And that's why I'm staying in her head. And here come, we come actually to the words. Now this was all about like body language, tonality. And uh, this belongs to not only uh, girls with uh, language barriers, but game in general, as I said. And now here comes the words. It should be like simple words, like really put it to ground school level. It should be like um, talk slow, make longer breaks, longer breaks than you usually do, which is also my problem. I talk too fast sometimes. I, for me, it's that, that's normal, but actually many people say that I'm talking really fast. And um, what I put here is also don't use phrases. Phrases means in German Redewendungen, because they would come along as too complicated and sometimes they don't even mean uh, the same thing as in your, your language. For example, I fucked up uh, some um, approaches I had, uh, especially with uh, Asian girls. I, I thought it was like something, a joke. I, I said this phrase and she didn't get it at all. And it was even like backfired hard. So yeah, don't, don't use phrases or like overcomplicated necks and stuff like that. And the next thing is also really a, a good a special tip is show cultural interest. You will stick out from all the other guys who approach her like that night or the, during the day or what else. What, what is showing cultural interest? Like basically, before you're traveling to the city, try to, this is for the travelers, try to um, remember some, like try to learn one or two words in that language. You know, when I was, for example, in Serbia, I was like, uh, learning, okay, or like um, traditional food is pjeskavica or the Serbian salad, like a Serbsky salad. I don't know if I, my pronunciation is right or, you know, there's one or two languages. And um, also about like traditional, they maybe had like sites or traditional clothes or actually try to break through this social, this, uh, social matrix of this culture. This is also like, um, I don't know, a few words, it doesn't have to make sense at all. Like, in Spanish or um, I don't know, like it doesn't matter, but I will show you what I mean with this in the following um, stories of mine. And the last but not least, a very, um, I don't know if it's even that special tip. Um, I, was, I was wondering because guys don't use today's technology. It's like Google Translate. And I see so many guys really don't even know that they have like, I asking them, man, this girl, she doesn't speak English at all, she speaks Spanish, I can't speak Spanish or whatever language it is. And I ask him, do you have a smartphone? Yes, man, I have the newest one, you know, blah, blah, blah. It's like, man, the fuck, then use it, you know? Go to your smartphone, and that's what I'm doing. My approaches when I'm like um, confronted with a girl who doesn't speak English is the following. First of all, I'm, okay, she doesn't speak my language. Do you speak English then? No English. Then I'm asking where she's from. Like usually they understand like where are you from or like uh, really try to put it, make it simple. And they say, for example, Ukraine. Like um, then I'm saying something like, for example, in Russian, I can say Privyet uh, or Kaktsim Yazavud, which means uh, my, uh, what's your name? Min Yazavud Patrick, my name is Patrick. And then I'm buying time with this. So don't make it like, um, 
I'm buying time and uh, during this scenario, I'm reaching to my phone and putting on Google Translate. So, so to not create this uh, really, this awkward silence, where are you from, Russian? You're standing like, oh, fuck, fuck, fuck. I saying something like, uh, or like in Spanish, no habla español or uh, I don't know what else. And reaching to my phone and then putting Google Translate. That's, that's what I'm doing. That's my approach, how it looks like. There was like, um, we went to a club and uh, it was actually, I didn't even want to go to this club. It was like really late. I was like, ah, fuck man, I want to go home, but let's try this club. The one guy said, ah, oh, it's full, man, you know, like go and uh, go get there. He was, of course, a friend of the DJ. Of course, he said it was full. We're going there. 20 people are in the club only. But one girl really stuck out of this hole. And I went there. She was drinking at the bar. And I went there and approached her. I said something in English. And she said, no English. So that's what I, most guys would like. Okay, fuck, man, let's, let's go home. Didn't work. But uh, I was asking, where are you from? She said, Ukraine. I said the same. Privet, kakti mi azavud, mi azavud, blah, blah, blah. Reached the phone. And really, like, um, I, bought myself, I bought myself time. And uh, actually, it was more. Oh, the fuck, it's running from itself. But uh, actually, what I did is um, it was all like body language, tonality, and the words were not that much, imp that much important. <laughs> I put it on play, I think. That, that will be the following. So anyway, leave it like here. And uh, yeah, like the, literally the third, the third, um, third, um, uh, the third sentence on Google Translate was let's go home to your place. I mean, she grabbed my dick. It was more like an IOI, you know, you don't need any words. She grabbed my dick and we kissed. We went to the dance floor and made out. And on the peak, I said, okay, let's go home to your place. So it was all Google Translate. The whole stuff was no English at all, nothing. And we went home. And she showed me pictures that she was in Vienna two weeks ago. And suddenly there was a man on the picture between, uh, behind the side. And she said, that's my husband. I said, <laughs> I said, OK, cool. She said, really? I said, yeah. And we are pulling. And uh, there was no re uh, last minute resistance at all. But um, that was so awkward at the moment. Like, she, she was naked. I was naked. She was about to jump on my dick. And, and suddenly she put out the phone like, and write something. And there, there was like, can we do it without a condom? And I was like, no. <laughs> like, usually I'm due, you know? Like, when you would have asked me one year ago, I would have done it without even uh, asking. But uh, this time, I was like, no, better not. And, like, it was awkward. We had sex, and uh, she was like, Google trend. Like, I was, like, on the phone, like, can I, can I come on your face? You know, it was, like, pretty <laughs> fucked up. And, of course, this would be nothing without a text game, text game breakdown of mine. This, uh, to get into a quick background, this occurred one year, one year ago. It was in Budapest. And uh, I met uh, three Latinas on the streets during daytime. And of course, from the three Colombian chicks, only one spoke English. But English means she, said she could uh, say no and yes. That's it. <laughs> that was the English. And uh, I got a number from the other girl who spoke absolutely nothing. And I was texting her to get her out. And this is how it looks like when you, when you number close those chicks with language barriers. It was, um, or the, yeah, you see it now. Um, she hit me up with hi. I think it was like, actually between the conversation or after it, I don't know. And what I did, oh, my face is like really fucked up here, like on some, some drugs or some shit. But what I did is I wrote her something in her language. She was from Colombia, so I know, okay, she doesn't speak English. I hit her up with some Spanish that she doesn't have to think about. And again, you will get an answer. Really, I guarantee you this, like when five or 10 guys are hitting her up at the same time, you will get an answer because she doesn't have to think about it or she doesn't, means she doesn't have to translate it into her language. So this was a light, funny, but sex worthy opener. It, huh? Okay, happen in your I will tell you later. <laughs> It is actually translated. I hope it translated right to Google Translate. Hi, crazy girl. I want to marry you, but I need your father's permission first. That was actually our, um, our callback humor. So, 
And yeah, I, what I did is like building comfort, as I said, she will react to your message, to this message way quicker than from another guy in English or whatever language. What I'm also hitting her up, I sent her a, a visual. Visuals are also really, really good when it comes to girls, especially with language barriers. You create a picture, you paint a picture, and the picture tells more like a thousand words, as the quote says. So what I'm having here to uh, answer your question is an ice cream which is formed like a rose. They have really the best ice cream there in Budapest. And um, this was our like callback humor. I marry you, it looks like a rose. So um, I said something like, uh, yeah, yeah, that was our callback humor to marry her. And she wrote back, we can marry it. Here, can you, you can see that uh, the English is not perfect. So, but actually I later found out that I was texting the whole time with her girlfriend who knew English. So not even her. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, I continued writing in her mother's language. I wrote, uh, okay, let's get married. And uh, uh, 10.30 at Aquarium Club. Shooting her also the location. I have a really good text scheme breakdown on YouTube, which explains the, the same scheme. It's about like sharing location uh, when she's foreign to the city. And when the location has like really like f five or five stars or like a good Google review, it's an automatic DHV also. And I'm building up to this story of getting married, which uh, also I set up a meeting at the high point and the high point was, was here. The high point was right at the beginning. We can get married. Okay, boom, let's go to the, let's go to the stuff, time and place. This is called distractor technique. Like when you like, trying to get her out of this typical like, hey, let's get uh, a date, you know, this stuff. You try to play it, um, you make it more playful. And uh, I will be there. She, there was an investment from her side. Now, first, you saw that I'm investing. This is actually mostly new, normal. Like you're investing also in the conversation, then it should turn like 50-50 and uh, yeah, she invested from her side. She took a picture of her, her and her girlfriends. And what I did is like sending memes. Memes is also really good because it's, she's reading more the pictures than the words. It's like, and easy understandable words, you can really easily translate it. It's easily understandable. It includes a sexual compliment, a kind of reward to her invest. And again, don't use nags or phrases because they can easily be misunderstood. But this one is like Leo DiCaprio in Wolf of Wall Street. This is an easy one. Then she said she's Colombian. And um, next one, she's, Comfortable with it means she jumped on this. She said, yeah, yeah, you're crazy. I get another picture. I don't know what uh, the picture said. Something was Colombian. I don't know what. And what I'm doing now is um, concretizing time and place, as I said. There is no need to be gaming now. I'm really hitting, okay, time and place. What's the time and place? And this is also a point where many guys are fucking up because they think that I have to be gaming all the time. And I did this also when I started. I was like too over gamey. And like, okay, she liked it, more, more, more. And then there was no response. So that's why, because she, she thinks that is this guy always like that, you, like, like that, like a clown? He can never, like, uh, can this guy never be like really serious? So that's why I not be over gaming at this point. I was already in, in, in the beginning, which was good, but now I turned it down and try to um, set up the place and time. She was like, uh, Actually, this was before it was like 3, uh, 3 p.m. This was all like uh, at 3 p.m. and I texted her again, like, where are you, chicas? Because it was like already 10 and we made out the date at 10.30. I asked her, can we make uh, 11 too? This grammar mistake is by purpose from me. I saw that maybe um, with this uh, little um, grammatically fail, I, this is like more easy understandable, I thought. Maybe, maybe not, I don't know. And she wrote, we're going to Morrison 2, which is another club. But I was still wanted to pull her to my place, and my place was at Aquarium. So to not get into this logistic objections, like three roommates, like they were like three girlfriends, and to not have these objections later. So I wanted to pull her to my place. But she explained then later that Morrison is where they are staying. And I found out later that uh, their plane to... Barcelona is going in a few hours. So I was like, okay, I'm coming. I figured out the reason behind. 
Anna switched the location, of course, in her favor to show empathy, but of course I was horny, so <laughs> <laughs> why should I say no, you know? <laughs> and perfect, you write me, blah, blah, blah. And there was like, I was here adding more pressure, like I was already in the club, was waiting for her. This was, the, I think, the first time in my whole life that I was on point on a date. Like I was there before the girl, usually I'm really late. And uh, I added here more pressure because not only I was horny, but uh, women's attention span is short living. Now what I want to say with this is when I'm waiting in a club and she enters the club, she probably gets approached right away or before she even enters the club. So she enters the club, a guy approaches her, she totally forgets I have a date. New, <laughs> new reality, the guy is coming in. So I was like, start to still like write her, oh, okay, to remind her, oh, fuck, I have a date. Okay. And what I learned from this whole situation, Latinos are never on point. <laughs> yeah. I sent her the picture with us together. Now, I met her in the club. I met her in the club, and she came with her girlfriends. Like, Latinos tend to come with their girlfriends. You never, rarely you can get them really alone. But um, I was met, here, met her with like the two girlfriends. I, again, Google Translate, not even that much. It was all body language and tonality and yeah. And um, the words were not that much as I said. And I made out with her and stuff like that. And then Google Translate, okay, let's go to your and, place. And uh, her friends left. Yeah, I went they to her place. Up. And that, that, was, that was the story. That was my presentation. And as last, before, before we end this, I want to say again, a really important, um, what I thought I want to share with you is that the guys who didn't have this situation yet, this is like playing a computer game. Like you're, level, you're at level one, mm -hmm. and uh, before you're reaching level two, you're like, okay, stop, let's play level one once more again. And play it a few times to get more better and better, and then when I'm feeling at the right moment or when I'm feeling good, then go and open the door to level two. While on the other hand, there is the other guy who's playing level one gets to level two, fails at level two, probably, but he knows, actually, he knows still what, uh, what is waiting behind the door to level two. And the next time he will make it. While the other guy is still on level one, level one, level one is maybe better at it, but he never gets to level two and doesn't even know what, to, what, will be, what he will be confronted with. So that's what I wanted to say. It's not only with the game, but life in general. You can take with you. And that was my presentation. Thank you. And yeah.